Welcome to the High Ground Podcast, I'm Stevie W. And I'm Callum. And we're on Mandalorian Watch. And we're at the Mandalorian Chapter 16. The Rescue. Oh. Directed by Ant-Man and Wasps, uh, Peyton Reed. Yeah, I'm quite surprised at that, actually. I thought they would have... Do you know, I thought it was going to be John Favreau at first. Like, he was going to sort of book... Because he did, did, he do, he did the first episode, did the first he? one. Yeah, so I thought oh, they would have bookended it. But, yeah, no, it was quite... I, I, I like Peyton Reed, anyway, so... Oh, uh, yeah, he's... Uh, come on, he, I have a huge Ant-Man, or Ant-Man, and Ant-Man and Wasp, and... Uh, the, the, the quant- and I'm looking forward to Quantum Mania. So p- the fact that it's Peyton Reed, I thought it would have been Rodriguez, Robert Rodriguez, to be honest with you. He was my uh, person I thought they'd end it with. But uh, well, before we begin, I was going to say I hope they carry on with this sort of guest directing thing. I mean, I'd love to see one by like Jim Cameron or you know someone. It'd just be great to have like a th- each each episode just be a different director, like with a theme. I'd like to see like a horror one. Yeah, done by like a horror director. That'd be really good. I I completely agree on that. I mean, come on, it's it, you know, uh, it's John, you know, uh, the Mandalorian is getting a lot of fans. So uh, yeah, which he, I'm I'm glad it's sort of picking Star Wars back up again yeah. after the whole episode nine with crap thing. So, no, episode, episode, episode nine, you know, it, it, it completely did, did. We didn't want it like that. Neither did we want episode eight. <laughs> Yeah, because episode 8 is the reason why I didn't go and see Solo. That's our generic, annoying fan voice, in case anyone was wondering. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, I, you, ever, you know, I'm, everybody knows, um, episode 9, to me, was what Star Wars, it reminded me what Star Wars was like in 83. Uh, last, last guy, with The Last Jedi, you know, that is, it's a modern day Empire Strikes hey. Back. I'd say that those those three mid three midnights was it four? We went solo midnight as well, didn't we? Yeah. yeah, they're probably the best midnights I've ever been to at a cinema. Like just us two sitting down, like watching the mass fans with with no knowledge of what's going to happen. Yeah. Like the, the first time is always the greatest. I always think. Yeah. And episode nine was was it was just the experience. Like I mean, it just felt so right just sitting there having the last Skywalker film. Just, it felt like just for us in a yeah. way, didn't it? Yeah, it was. I mean, I, 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 we'll go off a little bit of a tangent because it's, it's uh, yeah. I remember when we went to go and see it for the fourth time, and I was asked, Why are you going to see it for the fourth time? And I was like, Because we enjoy it. We're going yeah. to see the film, not to analyse it for a podcast. We're going because we just want to sit down and enjoy the film on a big screen. So, I, I, it's, yeah, it was. Up until the Mandalorian, to me, that was episode eight and nine. Was yeah, that was like the, the high bar for me. It, it was, but uh, chapter sixteen, the rescue. Wow. Yeah. I mean, just that ended. <laughs> we um, might as well do that first. I think. <laughs> yeah, I was. Uh, I was. I want to. I've got to say, I was very emotional because uh, I was determined that uh, as soon as I'd finished a paid job. To get in and sit down, not go on social media, don't want to know because I know the, the ones that come up as alerts on the phone was all Star Wars and I know Star Wars isn't gonna, they, they have the embargo until Mandalorian Monday. And it came up in the, uh, uh, a, a picture of Jeremy Bullock on their Star Wars Instagram. I was like, ah, oh, they're doing a little helmet nod. Then I read into it and it was kind of like being smacked in the stomach because we lost Jeremy Bullock, yeah. the original Boba Fett. So I was very, very emotional. It took me a while because the, the, the fiance was like, you really want, you want to watch it? Like, and it was like, I was umming and ahhing about whether or not we watched it. Uh, and I thought, I, I've got to get out of my system because I was very emotional throughout the whole episode because I'm Jeremy Bullock to me is Boba Fett and the original one. So, uh, so yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was a brilliant, it was, it was brilliant and uh, yeah. We're going to do that. We do have a tribute to Jeremy, so... Yeah. So, <clears throat> why are we going to, you said we're going to start at the ending, so which part? Well, just, uh, just for that reveal, you know, I mean, I, we always said from the start of the show, didn't we, the <clears throat> two things we've gone back on our word on this Yeah. Kind we of didn't wrong. want to check it because it would have taken away from Mandalorian. Yeah. Well, we were kind of wrong there because 
he's still supporting in in a way, isn't he? Yes. Um, and as we'll see at the end of this episode, um, he may not be. You know, it, it'll it'll be sort of focused on him next time. But the other one we said was um, we were, we were fine without having any main characters in it because we thought again it would steal away from you know the man that this is his story at the end of the day. It's Grogu's story as well. And but I, I think we were completely wrong. You know, just when when you see that X-wing coming into the hangar bay, I was like. Who's this? I, I, at first, I thought it was Ahsoka. I thought, oh, she's obviously like come back to. You know, she said she wasn't gonna, yeah. she didn't want to get involved anymore. I thought, oh, she's come back. You know, but I was fine with that as well. I mean, I, the way they did her was fantastic as well, like bringing her into the live action thing. But then, as soon as you see like the hooded figure and the destroying all those like dark troopers with 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 ease. And as soon as it goes to colour from the black and white CCTV and you see the green lightsaber, I was thinking, I was like, oh fucking my god, they are not going to do this, are they? And it was just done so well, like the, when he pulls the hood down. Yeah, I, I, sadly in a way, I think it, I don't know if it was like a, oh, you didn't get to see this in Last Jedi, so we'll do it now. But I'm glad we still saw it. It was just, it was, oh, yeah, so bleh. I'll let you speak, yeah. sorry. For me, uh, as soon as the X-Wing, I thought, I had two names in my head. Dave Filoni's character. I thought, yeah, that would be kind of cool if he's coming down to sort, you know. Yeah. Or Mace Windu. Oh, right. Okay. I thought Mace Windu. We had, because uh, I thought, who, who, I was literally going, who, who could they use? And Mace Windu because of Samuel L. Jackson with the Marvel and the Disney and his connections with John Favreau and the uh, MCU with Peyton Reed is part of. I thought, I thought then the other of one would be Luke Skywalker. And I, as soon as, as soon as you saw the hood, the, the black, and um, you know, uh, it's the same with both. It's the same with the uh, Mandalorian, the Boba Fett's Mandalorian armor. As soon as we saw that on the, in uh, the first episode, uh, I, I, I'm looking for the dent. In the, in, in the armor, I'm looking because it might be some of the same color schemes, but over. Well. So, what I'm doing is, is I'm looking at the uh, I'm looking at the I'm trying to see the hilt of the lightsaber because as soon as you know it's green, it, you know, and then you've got the one gold, the black glove, which which confirms yeah. it. Then you've got the uh, silver belt buckle. So, I'm literally looking for everything before the reveal, and my brain is going, it, Are they just teasing something that's not going to be there? So, you're literally looking for all the, the little, little things that you only. The, the quote fanboys, the real fans would notice the old school one and the yeah. and I'm getting really, really emotional anyway as it is because I'm literally heightened but I'm like uh, uh, there's the whole and you, you pointed out to me uh, about the Rogue One very Rogue One yeah, I, I basically thought it was like a reverse a reverse version of the the Vader scene in Rogue One, where he's just sort of going down the corridor, wiping. You know, it's the other way around this time. It's it's his son going around, wiping out the Empire's um, soldiers. So, yeah, I, I just I thought just the way it was framed and the way it's filmed, and and then you said the other one, which I didn't see, which was the episode one thing where you, the, the Jedi seem like the monsters coming through the door for the you know, and I got that sort of vibe as well. And, once you said it, yeah. I was just so, so, you can tell, it's done by the people who care, so they'll notice these things and they'll pass it on and we'll notice it because they've noticed it. That is, I mean, I, 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 was, I was on the edge of my seat and, and I like the way that there was two readings, you can take the, the both the readings and we are, you know, of, of the whole scene and when he removes his, when he removes his, uh, his hood and it is Luke Skywalker, I mean, it, yeah. it was all it, to me. It, it didn't seem like someone that was put in there for the sake of it. I mean, you 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 literally wonder who he's going to be. What Jedi are still in existence? Yeah. And Luke and Ahsoka, we know are. And, and it, it 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 wasn't until afterwards that I thought, you know, in an alternative timeline, you know, who I'd, I I would have liked it to have been Princess Leia. Who's that? Leia. Oh yeah, she, yeah. To me, would yeah. Be... I, I, that was another thing we discussed, wasn't it, at yeah. work about um, 
maybe while she was still doing her training because I, I sort of get the impression that she left don't you like yeah. that she sort of gave up training but yeah that would have been great but then you know it just yeah I, I mean what what else yeah in, with a black hood instead of a white hood yeah and you could have done like the rogue one again the rogue one mirror thing but yeah I, I don't know princess leia her worship at coolness doesn't look she she only look right with a blaster wouldn't she yeah <laughs> it, it, it is something that you know it, it, we, we we don't know how episode nine would have been you know had things gone the way that that um, you know we, you know the way we'd like it to have gone and when i say that i mean we, we're not having this conversation where we, we have to talk about character issue in past tense uh princess leia sorry uh but yeah with what they could do luke skywalker was it really it, it was it, i mean there's video if you could go keep on uh on YouTube and there are videos of people getting really emotional and and it is it was it was so it, it was it, it really got to me and it, I mean but then again I was heightened like you so already said that day and I watched it back and Peyton Reed has done a, a fantastic job of, of you know the direction and the characters there I mean it was it was, it was superb and you know the music it, 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 you know, uh, yeah, I gotta be honest with you. I didn't want Grogu to go. I mean, we, we, by now, you oh. obviously know you've, you've seen it if you're listening to this. We are in major spoiler territory. I didn't want Grogu to go with Luke. I kind of had a bit of a bit of a I don't want Luke him to. I mean, it's characters, yeah, and there's what's right for the arc, but it's not what right or how I wanted it. You know, does that make sense? Yeah, I know. It's when he looks back at, in the elevator, isn't it? And you sort of think, oh my God, I can't hold the tears back yeah. anymore. Stop it. Yeah. And and then I thought, I thought as well, even more tragically, like, I hope he wasn't in the Jedi Academy when Kylo Ren destroys it. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm assuming he's going to probably not end up with Luke at some point. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't know if the Mandalorian story arc is going to continue to have him looking for him or if he goes back to him or whatever. But... Did you think as well him taking his helmet off and did kind of like him renouncing his Mandalorianness, no, or do you think it was just because he loved him so much that he was like he he'd earned the right to see his face? I think the Bogotan has got a lot to do with the the removal of the helmet and the fact that he's actually found something that means more to him than a set of rules that are just rules doctoring that these mandalorians say you can't remove a helmet and be a mandalorian but others like bo katan and her her band say you can yeah and it uh so to me that just it just seemed natural that he would do it just so the whole let me look at you with my with my own eyes yeah oh uh, yeah yeah that's another good <laughs> good analogy isn't yeah. it uh, but I did find quite interesting as well, like the whole Mandalorian um, heritage is really, really fascinating and really well sort of done. It's, it seems more like this is where Star Wars gets really close to Game of Thrones, I think, because even if you watch Rebels, it, there's a lot of backstory to do with Mandalorian and Clone Wars. In fact, bo is actually from that, um, that, those two series, but they're very sort of, there's houses and certain houses are higher in, in social status than others and and I, I love the whole thing about it really threw a spanner in the works to, to her being an ally that he won the Darksaber from uh, Moff Gideon so therefore she would have to kill him in order to use it legitimately yeah. and I really like that sort of you know he just sort of says oh here you go I don't want it like mm -hmm. but it doesn't work like that and I'm hoping there's going to be that conflict carrying on into season three I watched it a second time. I know it's a little bit of a loophole. Mando, uh, oh, yeah. Mando, Din, Din Djarin, he's disarmed again. So theoretically, wouldn't it go straight back to. Yeah, but it has to be a, a duel to the death. So I don't know how they're going to get around that. I mean, I don't know if she's going to be an antagonist or whether they'll, he'll just sort of say, I don't really care, like here. Yeah. Or I don't know. I mean, it, it's it's sort of like they're, they're layers of seeds for the next season, aren't they? Along with the 
bit we'll talk about later as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, well, yeah. He's been overlooked. Giancarlo Esposito. Yeah, I think he's a really good bad guy. I really like Mark Gideon. I, I, first sort of, before you see him in season one, like he's sort of, the Empire, you get the impression they're just like a band of warlords yeah. now. They're not really an Empire. Whereas he's the only guy that sort of feels like he could lead them. And they've also mentioned uh, Thrawn as well in uh, the Gunthunder, was it? Yeah, the, that's yeah the, no, the Jedi, sorry. The one with uh, the one with Michael Bay. Yeah. So I'm 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 liking where this is going, like this sort of maybe before the first order rise, the Empire do try and sort of come back again. And I think Moff Gideon would be the he's he's really like he's like a fanatic, isn't he? He's he's almost he, he is like Moff Tarkin, really, isn't he? So he, he bleeds the Empire. So I, I think he's really good to have sort of absolute bad guy again that you can sort of hate and love to hate. Good, especially when you spare in your child and you go, no, 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 <laughs> no you don't do that. There's a line. Right. You crossed the line. You know, I mean, I mean, I really not follow this work, but you know, I was watching the other day. What's that? The Jungle Book. Is he in that? Is he? Taylor. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, he's, in Breaking, he's in Breaking Bad as well, but I was never a big fan of Breaking Bad. Yeah. I like it because it's sort of like it goes to show that who else is John Favreau going to take from his own little, from his little, uh, from his contact book? Yeah. I imagine that's quite a big book. Yeah, I mean... It's common not everyone, you know, I, I, I think John Favreau, he, he, he's, you know, oh. he is, he, him and Robert, Rodri him and Robert Rodriguez, I mean, sticking them together, and Peyton Reed, I mean, uh, I'd like to think that the people who listen to this, uh, our, our, our viewers, our listeners, are going to be like-minded where if we see something we like, we will go out and we will find other work by the same artists. But I want to watch more Peyton Reed stuff now. Yeah, I mean, I don't. Has he, what has he done much before Ant Man, or is he, was that his big break? Kind of. Let's have a look. I just it's Peter and Reed. Bring it on, yes man. Got oh, 20, yes man. Yeah. Twenty-seven credits. See, that's that's what I sort of when I heard his net when I sort of think of him, I just think of him as a comedy director. Mm. But because like Ant Man is like. But it works with Ant-Man and Ant-Man and Wasp. Like, it, it, it's nice having Marvel comedies, isn't it? But to see him handle this sort of material with such care and such precision, like, it's just... I mean, even the timing where, you know, where Luke takes the, the hood off and he starts talking to the Mandalorian, when you hear the whistles and the beeps and you think, that's not how to... Oh, my yeah. God, it is. And he just sort of pops out and the, the whole... When he sees Grogu, he sort of thinks, oh, not this little thing again. Yeah. <laughs> oh. The beats are sort of, oh, no. <laughs> Shades of Empire Strikes Back. I mean, that's the thing. That they, 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 they do right. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and disrespect George Lucas for Digital Yoda. But, but the practical uh, Yoda and Yoda species and the little Grogu, it oh, worked perfectly. Fun. But, I mean, we were saying that, what we were saying this as well the other day, weren't we, about how all the way through he's been practical mm -hmm. and Grogu and that even when you watch Empire Today, like, you, you can't look at it and think, oh, that's a puppet. No. It, it, it's a character. Yeah. And, and it still is. Like, you, well, I, I think when I see the prequels, I think, oh, that's CG. Mm. Like, I still, he's still cool, but you just think he just doesn't look real anymore. Whereas, even in Last Jedi, when you see him as the the, the spirit, yeah, it was we sort of popped, didn't we? Because we thought oh, it's the puppet again, like yeah. it's the the practical again. That was that was an emotional uh, an, an emotional thing, and you know, uh, I mean, we, we we said this about Empire Strikes Back is that I mean, we're not these people that we're not hate we're not uh, haters. We don't watch a film that we love to try and tear a new one we, we do it just yeah. to see if it's i mean that's the thing is we look at we look at things that people could argue we're looking at through, through rose tinted uh, uh glasses but 
you've got to, you know, uh, we when you look at Yoda, you cannot find fault in that performance. That is a, no matter yeah. how hard you try, you can pick little holes and be petty, but I, you can't knock the puppetry and the emotional investment you have in a puppet, and it's the same with Grogu. No. It, it's an actor. Like, it, I, I mean, Grogu is, is specifically a puppet, isn't he? He's too small to have an actor, but still the work they do on it is just, I mean, Jim Henson would be proud, is the only thing I can say. Like, yeah. But when you see Yoda in Empire, it, it's just more of, it's Frank Oz, it's not Yoda. Like, yeah. It, it's there's a person there. It's like when you see um I know you're not a fan of Lord of the Rings, but Andy Serkis when he's Gollum, you know, that that's someone acting. And to, to deny them an Oscar because it's not because they're not actually on screen, that's pathetic, I think. Yeah. You know, the, Andy Serkis is like the guy you go to for CG acting, isn't he? Like I mean he's Snoke as well, wasn't he? So yeah. Like and he spoils his Caesar as well in the Planet of the Apes films, isn't he? I mean I love him. He he is just, he's a great actor and he brings that acting sense. But, I mean, almost in a way where you see him in real life and you think, God, it looks weird when you see him, yeah. <laughs> you know, as himself. He, 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 he's superb. I mean, his performance comes through all the CG. And uh, it doesn't go for that, but I like Andrew Serkis. I mean, for, oh, me, yeah. for me, Andrew Serkis will always be Ian Dury. From Sex and Drugs and Rock and Roll, or uh, or uh, Martin Hannett in Twenty Four Hour Party People. I'd like to see him in Mandalorian, actually, like as himself. You know, as like a, a mercenary or something, because he's always like good as like one of those evil cockney geezers, isn't he? <laughs> he could be. You think about it, he's connected to the MCU. He is, yeah. It's Ulysses Claw. Yeah. Yeah. So they'll have him back. They will. So. That would be good to see. We could do it again. Come on, do it. And you look at the amount of roles Mark Hamill's played in Star Wars, but not Luke Skywalker. Yeah. I mean, Mark Hamill's probably, you know, like, he's always been knocked for his acting in the original trilogy, isn't he? But that's a hard part to play, that it? Because he, I mean, it's another thing we've said as well, isn't it, about all the, the main hero journey characters, is they're boring. Yeah. Like, Harry Potter's boring. And, not not to knock him, but Luke's character is a boring character. It's like the straightforward hero guy, isn't it? Like it's yeah. hard to do a lot with that character. Because same with Ray, like she's quite a boring character, yeah. isn't it? Because she's the entry point for the audience. So they have to be kind of so what's going on now? Who's this? What's that? And you know, that sort of like I mean my missus watched Harry Potter the other day from the start and the amount of exposition that they cram in because you've never been in that world before. You know, and, and I, I was almost, you know, when, when uh, Hagrid says about why they can't say Voldemort's name and like, oh, they're dark times, Harry, dark times. And I just sort of thought, that's just the Obi-Wan speech from yeah. A New Hope, you know, and he's like, before the dark times, before the Empire. <laughs> it's identical. Yeah. But that's another tangent for another time, isn't it? <laughs> what do you mean? The uh, Harry, Harry Potter is the cut. The Harry Potter, the same, yeah, yeah, it's a cousin of the original Star Wars trilogy. Or to yeah. anybody else, four, five, and six. That's definitely, uh, yeah, yeah. But I know what you mean about Mark Hamill. Like, I mean, he's he's one of the best voice actors as well. Yeah. Like that you can think of. He, he's 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 brilliant, and I mean, I follow him on social media, so I like him. Yeah, he's great on he Twitter, is, isn't he? Yeah, I, I'm on. I use I use him on Instagram. <laughs> Twitter's one thing I should get into more. I don't really use it. I just I only look at celebrities and stuff. I mean, but Mark Hamill's quite funny on it because he's just really like venomously anti-Trump. <laughs> yeah, but if you also look at all the art, the all I don't know why I do it to myself. I probably go on a little tangent. We'll go on a tangent. But I don't know why I do this to myself. But sometimes I just click on the comments. I don't ever respond, but I just read. Yeah. I don't even know. People that slate Mark Hamill and any you know for his Trump comments, and I'm like, do you actually watch Star Wars? <laughs> do you know Trump is Trump is the Empire? Yeah, you know, unless you he's the, Palpatine. Yeah, unless you you, know, like, you think these exaggerated villains don't exist in real life. Yeah. And 
the president of the United States is one of them. <laughs> I came across by accident on YouTube a guy slagging off Mark Hamill for having his opinion. So you, you may be Luke Skywalker, but you're a wrong actor, and you're just sick of being Luke Skywalker, and because you've done nothing else. And I was like thinking, you're doing a YouTube rant about something nobody, the, the, the people that are going to click on it is clickbait. And that's, you, there's no way you can put. There's no way you can put before bait that could just find what he is, the guy that did it. We get all these people that because they don't agree with Mark Hamill, they feel that they should have their opinions said to the world. But do you know what makes me laugh as well? The, the fact that they always do the like the oh, well, you're just Luke Skywalker, and I'd be really happy with that. Yeah, <laughs> it's not even real. I like. Like what yeah. other what other iconic character? I mean, everyone knows who that is, if, even if they don't like Star Wars. Yeah, it's like saying, "Oh, that villain's crap." Like Darth Vader. Mm. Like it, it doesn't make any sense. Like everyone in the world knows who that is, and who's when you hear that theme tune, even even like my mum hates Star Wars, and she she knows that theme tune. Like yeah, it it's just. I think when you see Star Wars being parodied as much as it has been, that's when you know something is intrinsically like stuck in pop culture, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Like all those Matrix parodies we got when it first came yeah. out. <laughs> the I am your father thing. Everybody knows it. Yeah. Empire Strikes Back. And everyone misquotes it. <laughs> yeah. No, I am your father. Not Luke, I am your father. Oh. What about, okay, we've, 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 just, we've literally gone for 26 minutes just talking about Luke Skywalker. Why not? <laughs> okay, uh, I will point out the bit with Boba Fett. That was the, the other ending. Yeah, Boba. And uh, the bit in the cantina type thing with uh, Cos uh, Cosca Reeves. And when she's taunting him, I was like, yeah, I love, I love it. it. That bit where he's like, she says, oh, you're not Mandalorian. He's like, never said I was. Yeah, I was like... <laughs> He's just fucking bad at me. You know what? Uh, a big sh I want to put a bit of a shout out to Mercedes Van Venados. I hope I said your name right. The Mercedes Venado. I thought she's... She's brilliant. I thought she's, yeah. she's absolutely super... I think, you know, I really want to see more of her. I do. And I'm hoping her, she's going to be, you know... I've, you know, with uh, Bo-Katan, uh, Kiki Sakoff, I mean, those two, you know, I thought, I thought the bit of where she takes on uh, Boba Fett, I thought it was super. It's that hit I, get, I sort of get the impression that Django was more of a into his heritage than Boba is. Mm. Oh, yeah. Boba's just a simple guy trying to make his way in the galaxy. That's still one of the best line drops. Oh, yeah. I thought that's what hit me when I was watching it. Uh, you know, if it had been anything other than Mandalorian, and, you know, for some reason it's all right to uh, have Katie Sackhoff and Ming La Wen and Mercedes Bernardo and Regina Carino, but if it'd been any other set of women that you put to the forefront, wouldn't that be considered a, a feminist agenda by the filmmakers? Oh, I, I, I don't know. I think I think it's been quite nice seeing some, some female characters put to the forefront in Star Wars for a change. Because I mean, even though we have Rey in the sequel trilogy, it's still quite a bit of a sausage fest, wasn't it? Yeah, I, mean, I loved it. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I loved it because I mean, you literally, I thought it was superb, and you can, you know, got the female, you got the nurturing side. So of course, it's going to be women that rescue the child. But I just thought. I mean, this is me taking. This is my one knock at fandom. That if it'd been any other, if it'd been any other thing, that they would have classified it as feminist agenda. Because look at it, they did yeah. it. They did it with uh, Daisy Ridley, the Ray, uh, Ray, having her as the Jedi that was trained up. Feminist agenda. Look what they did, did to the Ghostbusters, the 2016 feminist agenda. So I just think that there are certain fanboys and out there that pick and choose what they define as. I mean, to me, 
it was natural that it was going to be women that rescue uh, Grogu. Kick ass yeah, females. He's, he's still a child at the end of it, isn't he? So I think what the Mandalorian's definitely his father figure. Yeah. But there hasn't been a mother figure. So it's nice for him to have more than one, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Like Cara Jean clearly cares about him. And I think Fennec does a little bit as well, sort of, to do with the honor side of it all. Because yeah. she sort of follows Boba, doesn't she? So and, whatever uh, he finds important, she will. And uh, the uh, woman on Tatooine. Yeah. He's offering to look after the child while Mando goes off on his little quest. Oh, so, yeah, I like her. The one at the, the space ball. Yeah. Is it Amy Sedaris? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it is. So, I, I nice like. Nice to the... see R4 got a, a good home as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, John, thank you, John Favreau. You, you know, even before you introduced uh, Boba Fett's uh, armor, you've got. Uh, he got me the one who took him my boxes going, R54 and, uh, and Banthers. So, uh, yeah, I like it. I, really, I just want to point out now that, you know, I'm not one of these people that. that because I'm really, uh, I don't like the way that a lot of the fandom, you know, they, they will literally, I think I think a lot of guys are scared of women, especially, you know, in the geek culture. So when yeah. they, when they, when it, that's all like going well, saying, well, ah, this is, they, they, they pick and choose what they define as feminism, even though two of yeah. the strongest, uh, even though if you look at Aliens with Ripley and of course Star Wars with Princess Leia, two of the strongest females yeah, or Terminator. Yeah, the, the, and uh, yeah, it, it seems to be a, a case of pick and choose whether or not they actually like the thing that, that they're viewing. And a lot of them are just jealous that it's a woman that they can't relate to. But, yeah, it's like, it's like Marvel as well, isn't it? Like, you know the scene in, I think it's Infinity War, where um, one, of the, one of the women's fighting uh, one of the little fighting and uh, Scarlet Witch lands, and then um, Black Widow, and then Shuri, and they're like, "Oh, she's not alone," you know. And, and yeah, the, yeah. there's that where they fight, they fight together, and yeah. there's a lot of people that said, "Oh, I hated that scene. It was all like women together and all that." And I thought, "Well, so what? Like, you don't get to see them together very often in the Marvel films, do you? They're always with another man, or they're always in a group." So yeah. I'd like to see what like a female-centric Marvel film. I think that'd be quite good. Can I about just the female superheroes. As long as I get to have Zoe Saldana and uh, Karen Gillan in it, and yeah, I'll be happy. Yeah. Because I just like Nebula and uh, Gamora. Uh, so yeah, okay, I, I like Guardians of the Galaxy, but yeah, nah, it, 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 it's the whole picking and choosing. Like, yeah, it's. Uh, I'm gonna be. I. I. I I'm gonna go back because it, it makes me want to watch. Uh, um, you know, uh, Sasha Banks, uh, Mercedes' uh, character in WWE, made me want to watch some right. wrestling to see how, how see how she was, and of course, Cara, Gina Carino is the next MMA fighter, so, anyway, you know, it's like, literally, these hard-ass women, I just thought it would be absolutely brilliant, and the way that they, they rush the ship, I thought that was just, yeah. Yeah. I quite like, the, the Dark Troopers were quite cool as well, oh, yeah. I, I didn't realise they were droids, I thought they were actually, like, sort of genetically enhanced stormtroopers, but I don't think that's too close to clones, isn't it, really? Yeah. It worked brilliant, and like, uh, with Luke Skywalker taking them out, I thought that was... Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's when you watch, like, the Mando struggles to take one of them down, and yeah. he has to sort of, like, eject them into space to get rid of them. Yeah. Whereas Luke's just sort of walking through, cutting them through, like, their paper, you know, it's... It, I like... The, it, it sort of visualises the Jedi as this as they are at this point, gone back to being myth. Yeah. You know, where like they're like almost magic magicians, what they can do. And I think that that's that's what I love about Star Wars, how it has these multiple layers of world building where you can set it like I don't think it's that long after Return of the Jedi, is it the Mandalorian? Yeah. Is it maybe ten years, five years? Doesn't say, does it really? No. I was um, you... so I think like that's still long that's still short or long enough for, you know, the Jedi, there's only one Jedi in, in, the, in the galaxy, and it's Luke, you know, that, that we know of, yeah. that, that, that everyone Oakland knows of, that, that is overtly, a, like, there, and it's just, you know, this myth of Luke Skywalker, and it, I think it's just fantastic, and it plays into Last Jedi really well as well, where, or Force Awakens, where she's got, says, so well, isn't, isn't, aren't the Jedi myth, yeah. you know, I like that sort of, I really like that. 
I was I I completely agree, and, and yeah. It was the Jedi saved the day, and how uh, yeah. Mandalorians and the Jedi's actually the, in this universe. I mean, they were still fearing the bonds. The, the when Luke Skywalker comes on board, and it's it's Din Djarin that actually says open the doors because nobody's scared of him. Yeah. So it wasn't until Din actually says open the open open the open the doors and and let him through, and it was like he was Luke. That Luke, as the Jedi, was the monster again. He was, and I just thought. It, 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 it was all, all spot on. And keeping Boba Fett pretty much out of it until he was. Yeah, I, I think that worked actually. Because I, I was, what I was a little bit afraid of with the finale was that it's going to be a Boba Fett backdoor pilot yeah. show thing. And they did actually keep, they kept him, he was in Slave One for most of the time, wasn't yeah. he? Distracting the rest of the TIE fighters. So I, I, I really like that, that they had the balls to sort of say, yeah, he's really cool. We brought him back, but this isn't his story. And I really like that. And it sort of ties into the other ending that we'll yeah. talk about as well. I, the post credits ending. I completely, I completely agree with everything you said. And it, you know, uh, I think that if you had more of Tamura Morrison, it would have distracted because he. I mean, uh, yeah, he is. I mean, this is not disrespect, being disrespectful to Boba Fett or to Mara Morrison, but you, or even Pedro Pascal for that matter, but you stick Boba Fett, the original Mandalorian, the one Mandalorian we knew first, with anybody else, we're going to gravitate towards, uh, the, the old school fans are going to gravitate towards uh, Boba, but uh, yeah. by keeping him like, oh, you've had your, you've had your fix. He's just gonna go off now. You might see him again. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I, I so yeah, so I wrote down the music, Ludwig Göransson. I thought the music was superb in this episode. Yeah, yeah, it was fantastic. So it, it's it's all been sort of really good. The music actually, it just even if it's not John Williams, you can still sound. Star Wars, you can't even like oh, yeah. certain scores. Should we go to the ending? Yes, I think we should. I just want to, before doing this, I just want to know, I just want to point something out quickly. In, since it first aired, they've tweaked the credits to the last episode. Yeah, you said this to me, didn't you? Yeah. So it's now got, before what we're going to discuss, it's got a little in memory of Jeremy Bullock, so that was that's nice that they've, they've gone back and done that. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, do you know the people I actually had to speak to that said, you know, oh, I love the last episode of The Mandalorian? Did you say to the end of the credits? No. Go uh, back when you've seen the end of the credits. I knew so I was that. That's, that almost sort of sums up the, the old fanboy mentality versus new fanboy, whereas, like, we've loved seeing Boba Fett come back, if you didn't go to the end of the credits, it's sort of like you're a new fan, maybe, because, yeah. but if, if we, we, we always stay to the end of credits anyway, yeah. don't we, so it, it, maybe if, if you didn't stay, then it feels more like a gift to us, Yeah. that you stay to the end, so here's the next, like, what's going to happen. I think it's only respectful, I mean, we read credits anyway, but it's respectful you stay to the end, and when it cuts yeah. up and it's outside Jabba's palace, from oh. Return of the Jedi, I was like, okay, what we're going in there, I was like, I was just, wow, I was like, you know, when you see the coming that very, very Princess Leia, that was, yeah. it was, you know, coming, going into Jabba's palace, and that fat ass sitting on the, uh, the um, yeah, I, I love, I love the fact that Ben Fortuna survived the, the sail barge blowing up. Yeah, and turned into Jabba. He's like the slimiest, cowardliest guy ever. Yeah. And he survived it. Played wonderfully by Matthew Wood, who played him in uh, Phantom Menace. Yeah, and also did General Grievous's voice, if yeah. I'm not mistaken, is that he right? He is, yeah, and he's a sound designer for, yeah. by, uh, for Lucasfilm. And the bit with Fe having having Felix Shan, though. Oh, was the um the blue, whatever yeah. 
Though she, probably some sort of alcohol. You know, having, having her being lead, you know, being the first before the big reveal, and uh, shooting, oh, yeah. shoot, shooting the uh, Twilik uh, chain so she can get away. Yeah. And the big reveal with Mister Boba Fett. It was kind of like when you see the shadow of walking down the stairs. It, it's it's almost the part where Leia walks down the stairs, isn't it? Yeah. In Return of the Jedi, when she's dressed up as Bosch. And then, and, and Fennec Shan's outfit kind of looks similar to Bosch as well, yeah. I think, a little bit. I, I always so, thought the face mask is Zan Wessel from uh, Attack of the Clones. Yeah, yeah. But uh, what did you think then of uh, what, you did, what uh, Boba does to Biff on Oh, it's just, I, I think it's just sort of a, I'm the new Jabba, so yeah. fuck off. <laughs> I, I just like the way he just takes, just takes him and throws him on the floor. Yeah. And after we shot it and just sits on the throne and then it... What I thought was gonna happen was I thought he was gonna throw him off and then send him down for the I assume there's another rancor. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. And then, yeah, no, it's still great. I mean just Boba Fett being Boba Fett, isn't it? Like he's it's just the impression that he's gonna be the new intergalactic badass gangster, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, I tell you, I mean, I should, I, you know, I, I, I mean, a lot of people are going to disagree with this, but the bit with uh, Fennec Shan sitting on the arm of the throne, drinking the blue milk, I was like, that is the coolest piece of Star Wars I have seen in years. I mean, don't get me wrong, I fucking love Yoda and everything, but in terms of something that's visually so cool, her just sitting on the arm there, I was like, that. And I was, yeah. me and Owen's a huge fangirl, and I was just thinking, I bet she's loving every minute of this. How cool yeah, is that? Yeah, it's just a shame she's not in the, the bikini, in it? <laughs> oh. Has, although she has, there are pictures of her in, in that sort of, no, not, oh, no, they're not photoshopped. But she is, she is, she's a stunner, but it's just that, the fact that she sits on the throne, the arm of the throne of Boba Fett, and Boba Fett is looking cold face again. I like that as a poster on a wall. It's not like, I'm not one of these people that has like, you know, uh, film artwork on the wall, but that's the sort of thing that I'd love to see on a big on a, on a big mural or something on a wall with that. I thought that was yeah so cool. What about the, the fade to black and the slow uh, the book of Boba Fett, December twenty twenty one? Then we have to wait a few days before we find out it's a series. Yeah, see, because um, you thought it was going to be season three, didn't you? Yeah, Mandalorian basically, like it was going to be centered around Boba Fett being. In maybe an antagonist now, because, yeah. I mean, he was only an ally from circumstance, wasn't he? Like, yeah. he, he was only following through the honour of the code. He, I don't think, I don't get the sense he would have helped him out of the goodness of his heart. No. No. I, I thought that was how he, the armour looks brilliant, and that uh, was like, you have to wait at those days, and the fact that John Favreau was able to get it so that it wasn't done in the big investors' uh, reveal, so that yeah. it goes to show you that there's loyalty to the solid fan base that they weren't going to reveal anything until the, and the Disney were cool with it to get to let the fans have it first before anybody else. Yeah, and I thought that there's a lot. Um, Mandalorian is by the fans for the fans, and I thought the way that it was all handled and the big reveal and everything, I, I thought it was perfect. And I'm like, it, it just that that's. That's how you do it. That is, and you know, the thing you can, you can discuss for a few days before you actually find out what's going to happen. I just thought it was. I truly loved it. I thought that was that was. It was. It was. I know it's a TV series, but I'm going to say it was filmmaking at its best and storytelling okay. at its best. Yeah. I think Star Wars is back on that plinth of greatness again, isn't it? After yeah. Mandalorian, I, it, I mean, we love the sequel trilogy. Yeah. I think the general consensus is that a lot of people didn't, and even those people have admitted that the yeah, Mandalorian is pretty cool. And, and it's nice to see like older Star Wars fans saying, this feels like Star Wars again. Like you saying, you know, this is the coolest piece of Star Wars that I've seen in a long time. I totally agree. I think it is that old school versus like, you know, like we, it's the old stuff, but we've brought him back yeah. and we've reinvented him. And here he is like, enjoy you know and i think that's i think that's great i always think this is the thing playing with me is that you, you think about that where it's it's the filmmakers are, are dictating the content rather than yeah. 
That's how it should be, and it hit me about when I was, you know, when the old days where they didn't listen to the, the you know, the filmmakers had more control rather than focus groups and what do the people want. It was all about telling the story, and the Mandalorian has gone back to the whole. We're giving you something. Yeah. I mean, I and I want to go before I say this. I want to say I completely disagree with it uh, because I consider it to be. Keyboard Warriors, best basement dwellers. The only negative thing I've heard about Mandalorian, especially this season, it, it came when people started saying about how they should have recast uh, Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker, they should have got Sebastian Stan, and didn't like the, the, the CG of Luke Skywalker's face. And I was thinking, you got Mark Hamill back as Luke Skywalker, and yeah. I think it was done perfectly. So could these people please shut their, pardon my language, shut their mouths? You know, you know what it reminded me of? So look, when, when you look at the end, Sorry. how well they did Tarkin in Rogue One. Yes. You know, like, I remember when we went to see that as well, and yeah. we were sort of, we always discussed before, didn't we? I wonder if Tarkin will be, like, mentioned, or yeah. we might see a flash of him or something like that. And then there's that scene with the reflection, and, and we were like, oh, there he is. And then he turns around, and we were like, what the fuck? There he, there he actually is. Yeah. Like, wow. And, I got that sort of vibe from this. Like, I wasn't like, oh, it's dodgy CG and all this sort of thing. It was, there's Luke fucking Skywalker, yeah. like, post return of the Jedi. What more could you want? Exactly. And I think the people that, people that are going to kick up a stink, just have a dot, have a, you know, you're entitled to your opinion, but don't try and make your, make everybody else agree with your opinion because there are a lot of people no. out there that, that don't care about your opinion. No. Like me. Yeah. <laughs> I totally agree with you. So, yeah, I just, uh, here's what I was supposed to ask you, what you uh, about a five-star rating, but I just think at this, this pointless, I think this is... Yeah, I think it's, 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 it's an automatic five, isn't it? Yeah. It's not just, like, it might sound a bit sort of fanboy gushy from us, but it genuinely was done so well, and, like, that it was a good wrap-up to a great season. Yeah. Like, this has been a consistently good season. Like, there was one filler episode and even that wasn't terrible no. you know it's got Apollo Creed in it yeah <laughs> but uh, it's just I think this has been a consistently good series from season one to now and it's just you know and I, I was a little bit scared that the whole baby Yoda thing oh sorry baby Yoda I've done it myself yeah the whole Grogu thing was gonna overpower it but it, it, it was done so well and so like I think that's where the Disney handling came in quite well because they know how to handle cute things and yeah. make them good story elements don't they I mean it's their it's their business model isn't it yeah. but I just think it's just been so consistently good so so brilliantly handled so well written well directed well acted it's just it's, it's just I, I can't see anything wrong with it no. <laughs> I completely agree with everything you said. I'm, I can't say any more. So that's um, Mandalorian Chapter 16, The Rescue. I'll see you in another Mandalorian watch. Yeah, that's it for another year. Oh, yes. <laughs> see you soon. See you later.